um, my husband shared something very interesting with me and I thought, wow, that is so true. Uh, we usually tell our kids stranger danger, you know, don't speak to strangers and all that kind of information that sounds good because the truth of the matter is that there's a lot of things that we just say and we don't even think about it because it sounds right but it's not really right. Anyway, so the idea is stranger danger, don't talk to strangers because you might get stolen and all of these things but the reality is even statistically a lot of kids that are mistreated and a lot of kids that are abused they usually are not abused and mistreated by strangers. Not that it doesn't happen, but the majority of the people that bring serious harm to our kids as those that are known to. So what would it look like instead of us teaching our kids stranger danger, um, don't talk to strangers, I mean the Bible says that some of you have entertained angels on our way. What did you, how would it look like or what if we could actually teach our kids to to be true to their intuition, to teach them and practice them, because the truth of it is that a whole lot of adults, by the time they are at least, let me say, teenagers, 13, most of their intuition is killed by this whole idea of not being honest to what you feel. What I mean by that is that you can tell your parents, I mean, you know, most kids, most of us are raised in homes where what you say is not that important, is what the adult think is important, that is important, which is unfortunate because then we teach our kids to ignore the intuition. And what that does is you you teach them to trust an adult because it's an adult. And when an adult unfortunately misuse or um, I would say break that trust, it's hard for a child to understand because the adult is supposed to know better and the adult is um, supposed to protect them and, and have the best interest at heart. But the truth of the matter is that it's not always the case. In fact, it's mostly not the case. That is why we have some of these huge, huge issues that a lot of people have in the adults. It's primarily because the caregiver failed to do their job. And now it's not even time to get into, um, you know, blaming the caregiver. It's more to acknowledge and recognize that a lot of issues in adulthood come from childhood traumas. It's something that we don't want to acknowledge. Slowly but surely, people are getting into it. To just acknowledge the fact that a whole lot of issues that people have, um, bitterness, anger, blaming others, a lack of gratitude, all these things, they, they're just simply sort of like um, symptoms, short-temperedness, you know, all these things, they're symptoms of a broken perspective of self that was trained from childhood. So you were ignored and uh, nobody really listened to you and people didn't take you serious and when you spoke they're like, you talk too much. That is why I don't like it when adults put labels on kids consistently and a child is listening to it, she's going or he's going to start thinking of themselves in that manner. So we have to be very mindful of the kind of words we use with our kids. Because if we are not, unfortunately, we train them to think of themselves in that manner. And trust me that it takes a very long time to undo something that is bad. It's possible. But I would say as parents that want the best for their kids, we have to be mindful and we have to start right by speaking into their lives. We believe in discipline? Yes, absolutely. But you speak what you would like to see into their lives. You don't tell them, um, you don't label them and call them names and tell them that, you know, you keep on behaving this way, you're not going to be anything and all these things. They do, they do imprint on a child's heart, a child's soul. And trust me, even though you're not aware, you don't really want your child to be like that. So don't speak things into your child's life that you don't want to see. Rather, take that 
realize it's about. If there's anything to love you, if there's anything worthy, I'm actually going to check in and find. I think it's actually in, in Philippians 4, 13. It's interesting that, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, this one is I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Um, I think it's in Philippians that says if there's anything worthy, if there's anything lovely, if there's anything um, beautiful, these things think of. These things think of. Meditate on it. There's a scripture in Proverbs that says, as a man thinketh, so is he. What you meditate on, you become. Thank God for his word. Because the Bible reminds us that it's funny. Yeah. I'm not getting off. Stay with me. Stay with me. Um, I know I started with please let's not teach our kids stranger danger because you mask a whole community of people that might actually become good friends to your kids. And then you, you save zone a whole community of people that might actually be actually danger to your kids. So what we'd rather do is to help the child um, sense when something is not right. Be honest to the intuition. The best way to renew your mind is to renew your mind using God's word. Because there's so many lies in this world, sometimes you don't even know what truth is. If you grow up with lies of what you're not, who people are, or what you're not, like, all that can really, unfortunately, cloud your judgment of who you are, who God is, and you know how to relate with others. But thank God that that's exactly what salvation is about. You see, I think more often than not, in fact, mostly, we, we, we don't even understand this this faith that we have received, the salvation that we have received. Salvation meaning you are saved to God, you are saved for God, you know. Um, we don't even understand it, and we don't understand it because we're not necessarily like living it out as we should be living it out, but that's a topic on its own. What I wanted to say today is that we must mind our kids well-being we must take care of them by listening to them and teaching them to be true to their intuition when something doesn't feel right baby um let me know when you don't feel comfortable with something don't do it when somebody says you must do something it doesn't matter who it is it could be an uncle it could be an aunt it could be it doesn't matter who it is if you don't feel comfortable let me know let's have a conversation about it you are teaching them to mind what they're feeling and not do things just because they're expected to do it. And this is not to say that you can't instruct your kids to do stuff around the house like, can you please help with this? And the child's like, I don't feel like it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a situation where someone is crossing a boundary with your child and doing something to them or saying something to them or treating them in a way that makes this child feel small but they don't even understand it so they can't necessarily articulate it and they don't even have to have the words for it they just have to say mommy you know when i'm around this person i don't really feel good like i don't i don't know what it is it starts them that's it it starts them and you as a parent obviously you need to watch it closely you need to observe it very closely. You don't have to have a conversation with the person. You don't have to do much because, trust me, these things are not solved by conversations. But you can start to put a distance. Start to put a distance because your kids are the future of this community, this country. They are the legacy that you are leaving behind. As in, like, they will continue with the purposes of God, they will continue to heal and restore people. We don't, we don't need more engineers in this world. We don't need more um, inventors, whatever you call it, more doctors. No, we just need human beings that are honest to what God has placed in them 
and they understand the power of the servitude and they want to serve. That's, that's exactly what we need. We need human beings that are filled with the, with the Spirit of God who loves others and who are going to serve the gifts that God has given them. And it happens when people are honest with themselves and they um, they learn to know that they are valuable because God has made them valuable, wonderfully and fearfully made, and they will respect that. And when you respect yourself, it's, it's easy to respect others. When you see people going around not respecting people, it's because they don't respect themselves. For whatever reason, you can get into multiple reasons why that is, but fundamentally, people who disrespect others is fundamentally because they don't respect themselves. That's, that's exactly what it is. It's not to say that when somebody disrespects you, you have to respect them in a sense that, you know, um, like, go out of your comfort zone, not comfort zone, like give them honor. No, if someone disrespects you and does things that don't stay with your principle, politely step back. Well, you don't, it depends what it is. I tell my kids that if someone says something or one them to do something, just say no, you don't have to be polite about it. But all I mean is that you don't also have to be um, like rude about it. That's that's the word I'm looking. You don't have to be rude, you can be stern, you can be firm, you can say no. And hopefully that's usually enough. So let's teach our kids to be to practice to be honest to the intuition.